good morning and welcome everyone to yet another episode of uh, from the writer's desk and uh, i am so delighted and thrilled to have one of the most incredible human beings of our times lieutenant general kgs dilon who is popularly known as tiny dilon uh, first of all so welcome to uh, penguin india thank you thank and you uh, how do you feel you know uh, visiting a, 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 a publishing house uh from you know you are a hardcore army man so how is the experience the first impression see when this idea of writing the book came and i remember we met for the first time in february 2021 22 sorry and i always thought you know this uh, editors and this uh, book writing people the publishing people are some wizards you know <laughs> uh, with the uh, you know freaky ideas but now that i have interacted with you i interacted with the team over the last one year of uh, writing of the book and now publishing of the book and today morning when i walk in i see all smiling faces you know full of cheer full of enthusiasm the young people you know, they're bubbling with energy and they're thorough professionals in what they do wonderful but sir uh, when we read your book you know from the very beginning you said that you were destined to be an army man uh but perhaps in your childhood you, you never thought of it to begin with uh, how did you derive at that that you were going to be an army man army or defense forces has always been type of a passion in northern india because of the geo strategic and historical reasons and coming from a family my grandfather incidentally was in the army he fought the first world war and coming from a family where my both my uncles with whom i spent the maximum time one was an army man one was a bsf man so i have seen uniform from day one and have seen the way uniform is respected in a country by the country men of the country women so somewhere you know i may not have at that time thought myself to be becoming an army man but somewhere i had a tremendous amount of respect for the army men you were attracted to the uniform. yes i was attracted to uniform then i was studying in kendriya vidyalaya most of my class fellows were sons of the army officers or jsc or the jawans and uh, sons and daughters so i had interaction with them i had went to their homes i met their parents so slowly and slowly by the time i was in 11th class it had creeped in that i am wanting to join the army and then a class fellow of mine harish jang bahadur fifth son elder four brothers all excellences he was crazy to join nda and in fact he failed my form for joining nda and uh, rest as the same history here i'm sitting with you today would you like to say share certain things about your childhood which continues to influence you or influenced when you started you know serving in the army we know big, that uh, your grandmother bg yeah. plays a big role biggest influence i'll say the person with grit determination and rock solid personality in my life was my grandmother maternal grandmother nani ji respectfully we used to call her bg she was one rock solid lady who would not let us do anything which is not as per the book and who would not spare us if we did anything which is not you know being a man enough even at that age of 3 years or 5 years so learned a lot from uh, my grandmother and those things you know i imbibed and when i joined the army even today after so many years her teachings are guiding me somewhere hats off to her and if it was not for my grandmother and of course uh, my mother also which i written about in the book i would have been sitting here today and talking to you so my wife is the third woman in my life a uh, lady in my life after my grandmother and mother who has held the family together and now the fourth generation has come in our daughter she is such a big support for me in critical manner i am i am telling you four generations of ladies in my life they have motivated me in their own ways starting from beta to high dad life has been fun with the ladies in my life i love them all thank you sir you have been uh, you know drawing you know from this you have been and we are discussing very regularly on this in one of those conversations and it's partly there in the book that you said that how important it is for the men to learn cooking yeah. and you said that one could draw inspiration from army life 
that it is you know absolutely necessary that man learns cooking uh, i am sure that audience would love to know uh, you know your uh, you know thoughts on this army marches on its stomach there is a chapter in my book which you are aware of how army survives in difficult areas this statement army marches on its stomach is has been said by napoleon in a century ago maybe years ago decades ago so no operational plan can be successful unless it is supported by a very logical logistics plan you can survive 24 hours or 48 hours if the ammunition is falling short but this army where the numbers are tremendous you may not be able to survive if the food is not there so every army man we have some very proficient cooks in the army but on isolated posts there are only 10 to 12 boys or when we are on a patrol for 10 days 14 days the cooks don't accompany such patrols so we have to cook on ourselves and when on a patrol or on a isolated post the rank structure doesn't matter you are a team member as an officer i may be a captain or a major i will do all the duties which a rifleman or a jawan does i will stand guard at night i will help in cooking i will go out and uh, draw water from the nearest spring so this is where you learn cooking by and by and in fact uh, you are aware there is a full chapter on uh, cooking oblique cooking related aspects in the book and some very humorous anecdotes are there in very serious situations <laughs> go out and read those you you love it especially the youngsters uh, on a serious note what you have shared just now is that the leadership in army or the way they imbibe inculcate that sense of leadership is very different from what we see in the corporate setup so i would specifically like to ask this questions for the younger people or people who are aspiring to be, a, be the leaders uh, men and women what would be your piece of advice for them what does leadership mean uh, before i answer this question i would like to clarify two three terms there is a boss there is a term called manager there is a term called ceo there is a term called commander and lastly there is a term called leader all the few terms which are used initially maybe a manager maybe a ceo maybe a commander they are appointments they are sitting in that chair which is designated as such whereas the leaders leaders are neither born leaders are neither trained leaders are not created leaders emerge leadership qualities are there new they come out under difficult situations and what better situation than combat situation when the bullets are being fired and you are at the receiving end of the bullets the men who make a difference under those situations are the leaders rest are bosses money is not a criteria in army at all we deal with lives and deaths and one jawan under my command has got father or mother grandparents brother sister wife children at least 8 to 9 lives are directly affected by this man's life it is responsible i am responsible as a leader for well being of this one life and in turn nine more lives the shoulders of a leader under in combat have to be so broad that his first and foremost principle in life is welfare of his troops well being of his troops nothing becomes more pious more religious more sacred than this so so you uh, joined as a, as a as an officer then you became uh, 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 the mighty general uh, I, I I am absolutely certain that people would, uh, you know, recall uh, the experiences with you every now and then. While you are known as your name is Lieutenant General K G S Dillon, but how does this mighty general got the name Tiny Dillon? So it's a when I joined my unit, December 1983, Fourth Battalion, the Rajputana Rifles. That unit had a small, uh, you know, sort of a tradition. wherein the young officer who joins the unit he was given a nickname based on not his personality but opposite of his personality 
that may be physical appearance that may be intellectual uh, levels of the officer so i got this name tiny and it also gets carried forward in all day to day routines we when we speak on the radio set which is popularly known in the civil as wireless we are supposed to use a call sign which is given in the press seat, the commanding officer's call sign the company commander's call sign say suppose if i say alpha 1 for alpha 2 the enemy who is intercepting would straight away pick up who is talking to whom but if i say tiny for goofy the enemy would never know which outstation is tiny which is goofy what rank he is holding what uh, appointment he is holding how many troops he has is under command so it has inherent security also so in my battalion we use these nicknames as call signs also and of course uh, it became popular because everyone in the army knows me as tiny dino hardly anyone knows me as uh, kamal jit singh dino in fact saying it also sounds odd about <laughs> myself also so it's, it's it's been a great journey so sir from uh, you know changing the gear a bit uh, because you we, we discussed a lot of you know uh, you know serious stuff but this is also serious at the same time you know i think this is very nostalgic for you and you are very emotionally attached to it uh, kashmir you know because in your book time and again you have said that going to kashmir is going visiting my home uh, would you like to talk about kashmir a bit my question would be that when i say the word kashmir you know what kind of a sentiment it evokes yeah you are right since uh, as an editor you have read the book in the draft stage also kashmir forms 60% of the book and in fact you use the word uh, home there is a chapter by the title kashmir my home comes so kashmir when i say kashmir lot of people when today they hear about the word kashmir lot of bad thing come into their horizon for me kashmir is a land of beauty kashmir is icy mountains flowing rivers grazing meadows trees you know bakarwals or the graziers grazing their cattle on the hill slopes kashmir for me is mehman nawazi kashmir for me is ibadat kashmir for me is kashmiriyat kashmir for me is wazwan the food kashmir for me is paper mache kashmir for me is walnut carving kashmir for me is namdas gabas carpets shawls kalamkari kashmir is a society which is full of love and respect and i'm not talking of a specific religion every one in kashmir hindu muslim sikh buddhist jains they are such lovely people it's a treat to be amongst them the poets the writers you now since we're sitting in a publishing house kalakar hain musicians sports person kashmir is much bigger than what you hear in the news today of course we talked about kashmiri pandit saxodas in the book in great detail because i was a captain and a present there we talked about other operation of rashtra rifles in kashmir we have talked about pulwama we talked about balakot we talked about abrogation of article 370 because i was the core commander and responsible for all these things having said that Kashmir for me continues to be heaven on earth, which is burning. We have doused it quite a bit, and the real beauty is emerging again. Kashmir is beautiful, will remain beautiful. Visit it, you will love it. So finally, final final question: How many books have come? How many books have gone? What would be, you know, one message that you would like to give young men and women of our times? know from and a piece of you know not advice but you know something you know you would like to share uh, which you think that you know it will be great if they imbibe it as a soldier it is natural for me to say love your country love your country man you know be a dedicated citizen but on a broader note it's not only the army which fights the wars nations go to war military is only fight on the borders as a citizen who is not wearing a uniform you can contribute tremendously to the comprehensive national power even if you are producing mustard oil 
produce good quality mustard oil, it will get exported, we will earn foreign exchange that will be utilized for the well-being of the citizens as also it could be in the military for better war, war fighting. So your contribution as an individual, whatever you are doing, is tremendous for the nation building. Today if you want to say I want to do something for the country, obey the traffic rules. Don't litter the area around your house. Small things, plant a tree. Just help a person of old age cross the road on the, you know, the pedestrian footpath. Do small things. We are the nation of 140 crores. If 140 crores do a one small thing today, imagine the compounded effect. Be a good citizen, be a good son, be a good daughter, be a good father, mother. You will be a best Indian. Love you, take care. Jai. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. So the book is here. It's available everywhere, online, near your bookstores, everywhere. And it's an amazingly brilliant, gripping narrative. You must pick up a copy. Happy reading.